I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited today to bring God's words to you. Praise God. Now listen, we've got the life of God walking in us. We've got the Holy Spirit right in us, bringing us God's truth. Praise God. Now, now listen. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, every day on this broadcast, we should make demand for our daily bread. Now, why is he telling us to make demand? Is it that he doesn't know he's supposed to give up? Listen, when you make the demand, it means you know that he knows you've got daily bread. Praise God. Can you see it now? So, can you, are, you, are you ready? Praise God. Are you ready? Let's go. Say, say this after me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now expect a miracle. You can't pray this prayer and not expect a miracle in your heart. Because he gives us daily bread. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Shakaya. Let's just bless the Lord. Father, we thank you. As we receive your word, I declare right now burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, he's promised us something. And what is that promise? He said he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he wants you to boldly declare everywhere you are. The Lord is my helper. I fear nothing. Hallelujah. I don't fear what any man would do unto me. Why? I've got the Lord as my helper. Now think about it. So Jesus had promised that he would be with us. He told the disciples, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this world. Now, he is with you, and I told you the, what he is doing with you is one important thing. And what is that? Telling you what you should do. Telling you what you should do. Now, he, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus now by every means have made provisions available to you. I want to show you something. First Corinthians, no, Second Corinthians chapter 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13. That's the last chapter in Second Corinthians. And look at verse 14. It says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion communion of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now, where, whenever we, we hold meetings as, as believers in Jesus Christ, we mostly end with this prayer. Oh, can we share the grace in fellowship? Oh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Now, it's a prayer mostly prayed in Christian gardens. Do you, have you sat down to understand or to look into this and say, what am I saying? In Proverbs, it says to you, in all your getting, get understanding. So when I pray the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, what am I saying? What is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Now I'm telling you the reason God has said this month, beginning from this month, He is going to abundantly supply 
your needs. And he's doing it supernatural. Now, when he says he's doing it supernatural, that's to tell you that he is not looking at what you do. He is not looking at who you are. He is not looking at who you know. He is only looking at who will believe him. So now, he has promised that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Now I'm getting to, in, into this now to show you something very important. He says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, for example. Now what is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? I'll show you. 2 Corinthians, same 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. Now he said, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, he says, Chapter 8 and verse 9. He said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know it. Yeah, he says, You know it. So, what is it? Say it here. It says, That though he, who's the he? Jesus was rich. Think about it. Jesus was rich. Yeah. He said, Though he was rich, yet for your Six. Now think about it's it's English, so you should understand what he said. For your sake, he became poor. Now that doesn't mean we stole his money. <laughs> it's got, you know, you know, I used to be rich, oh, but see, that my brother dealt with me and I became poor. Nah, 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 that's not what he's saying. Now, if that's what happened, then he would have lost his riches. Praise God. But then he said here, because of you, he chose to be poor. Now, as he chose to live like a poor man, even though he was rich. Why? Hmm. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Now, this is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we say the grace of Jesus Christ, what are we talking about? This is what we are talking about. This is what it means. See? So whenever you are closing that meeting and you are saying the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, let your mind go to this. What? He was rich. And because of me, he chose not to spend his riches. And actually what it means is he left it for me. He had riches to enjoy. He said, no, I'm not going to enjoy. I want to leave it for my children. Mm. For your sake, he became poor. For my sake. So I'm here now. What am I supposed to do with that information? Someone has left riches for me. Someone, and his name is Jesus, left an inheritance for me. Now, now, this is not just a spiritual inheritance. This, you remember the Bible says God promised that he, Jesus, He is called the seed of Abraham. And God says, Abraham is blessed with the whole world. So Jesus actually is an heir to the world. Now he chose not to leave as an heir of the world. He chose not to enjoy any of those. Why? He said, Father, I don't want to enjoy all these things. I want to leave it for them. And we are here now. That means we are loaded with what? The riches of Jesus Christ. <laughs>
you didn't get that. This is the grace of Jesus. This is what it means when we say the grace of our Lord Jesus. But then let me ask you this question now. Are you living in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you still struggling with poverty? Even though an inheritance have been left for you. Now this is the funny part of this. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. No, the day the Lord opened my eyes to this, I said to myself, I said, never, never, never. It is, it is a crime for me to walk in poverty. It is a crime for me to walk in lack. It is a crime for me to assume the mentality of lack. Now, remember, he told us not to be covetous. Now, not to be covetous or to be content doesn't mean that you should suffer. To be content, I've taken like, Three days to explain what it means to be content, <laughs> to, to, to live in contentment. I've told you, it just simply means what you have today is all that you need for today. Now, that's what it just means. It doesn't mean don't aim for something higher. No, 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 praise God. Because you just say, I'm, I'm content. Too. I'm content. You say, why are you riding that bicycle? No, I'm content. I'm content. Nah, understand the difference between being content and, and being poverty-minded. See, now, poverty-minded, so, oh, that, that, that's a good car. <laughs> I'm content. I'm content with what I have. Now, you, you're deceiving yourself. See, you're deceiving yourself because, you know, you need that car. That car will make things faster for you. That car will make things better for you. Now, what does it mean? Now, he's, he, he say, it's wrong for him to say, ah, if I get that car, hey, then I know that I'm made. Now, that's covetousness. All these things are just for us to use. Now, you know, sometimes even as believers, if you find yourself in a situation where God supernaturally blesses you with something big, and then the next thing you're now thinking, ah, I don't know when this would happen again. So, let me be careful how I spend it. Hey, that is covetousness going, walking in your mind. That is covetousness. You are being covetous. Because you are thinking, let me, let me not spend this thing anyhow. Of course, he's not called us to waste. But, but he's also not called us to be stingy to ourselves. So, because you're afraid... For it finishing, you don't want to even help anyone. You're just taking piece meals from it. Just taking piece. It's still going to finish someday. <laughs> God. And let me tell you the truth. The day is going to finish. He's going to be right there waiting for you. He said, I have been with you all this while. <laughs> so, so you just realize that. Think about it. You know, you, you don't want to get before the Lord. And he tells you, hey, you were supposed to be a billionaire on the earth. That's why I say, you could have come billionaire. What, what, what concerns me with being a billionaire? Hey, it's just about the needs that you have to meet. Now, now he's not making you a billionaire, so you just sit and be flying all over the world and just say, ah, today I feel like being in the US. You just fly and go to the, ah, I'm tired of the earth. I feel like that. That's not what he's, he, he gives us a life of purpose. So Jesus haven't left his wealth. He, the Father now made him to be the high priest. And you remember the Bible says he was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now that's something you need to understand. I don't have time to talk about that today. But hear me, he was made a high priest after the order of of Melchizedek. Now, what does it mean after the order of Melchizedek? Now, Melchizedek comes with a blessing. See, you remember when he met Abraham, guess what he told Abraham? He called him, blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now, when God wants to bless you and he gives a name, He's just telling you the kind of blessing that he wants to bless you with. That's how God operates. If God comes and says, I am come to, I am Jehovah, 
your healer and I have come to visit you. Now, what, what do you expect from him? Expect healing from him. Now, when he comes and announces himself and says, Hey, I am the God that possesses the heaven and the earth. What does that mean? Man, he's going to bless me with the heaven and the earth. Praise God. Our time is up today. Hey, if this broadcast is, is affecting your life, help me do this. Like our page on YouTube. Set up the notification button. And then also, one last thing you must do for me, share the message. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.